Coming up, we'll take a look at the science behind wildfires. Then, on strike, some of your favorite actors are on strike right now. We'll explain why and what exactly it means to go on strike. Also, around the globe, we'll head to the Galapagos Islands, home to some exciting creatures not seen anywhere else on the planet, like giant tortoises. Plus, Gator News. These elementary school students spent their summer break preparing for a big assignment for the new school year, one that we here at Nightly News Kids can relate to. Gators out. We've got the scoop and inspiring kids. We'll introduce you to this boy from Rhode Island who is serving up some lemonade, all in the name of goodwill. And then meet the champions. This softball team from Massapequa, New York, just made history. Their remarkable story just ahead. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. I hope you guys are having a great week. We've got some fascinating stuff to share with you, including our picture of the week. Plus, we have two really amazing yeah. stories this week in our latest inspiring kids installment. And the students behind Gator News will be here. We can't wait for that. But first, we want to begin with one of the top stories in the news this week, and it's a pretty serious one. Emergency teams and volunteers are on the ground on the Hawaiian island of Maui, helping with recovery efforts after wildfires devastated some communities there. This as investigators are still looking for clues as to what ignited the Maui blaze, which destroyed many homes and businesses, and it sadly took many lives. Look, we know what happened in Maui was awfully scary and upsetting, but it's important to understand what wildfires are all about so we can better protect ourselves. So kids, you may want to grab a parent or grown-up to watch this segment in case you have any questions. A wildfire is an unplanned fire that usually starts in natural areas like forests and prairies, places that give the fires the fuel they need to spread rapidly. Wildfires sometimes start because of a natural occurrence like a lightning strike. But often they are caused by human activities like leaving a campfire unattended. A fire source is one part of what experts call the fire triangle that creates wildfires. This also includes oxygen from the air and that fuel which can be anything from trees and shrubs to structures. Weather conditions also play a key role in determining how much a wildfire will grow. Windy conditions like those experienced during the Maui fire can increase the amount of oxygen in the air, and higher temperatures and decreased rainfall dry out trees and plants, making it easier for fires to start and spread quickly. Just this year, wildfires have impacted communities not just in Hawaii, but across the continent, from California to Canada. The wildfires in Canada led to the hazy skies we saw across several states in June and July. We are seeing more wildfires, and we're seeing them pop up in new places, like Hawaii, where fires of this scale are really uncommon. And another big part of why we're seeing more wildfires is climate change. Um, places like California, where we typically see the most wildfires are experiencing a drought. And when you have a drought, you have more vegetation that is dried out and ready to provide the fuel that that fire needs. I know it's disturbing, but know there are some things you can do to help prevent wildfires from starting and be prepared in case of emergency. A lot of wildfires actually begin when people leave something burning in the environment. So if you go camping and you build a campfire, really make sure that you put it out um, whenever you leave or um, avoid anything like matches or lighters in the environment that could ignite a fire. Another thing that you can do to prepare for a wildfire if you live in a place like California, Oregon, or Washington, where you tend to see more wildfires, um, is to have a plan in place. So if a wildfire were to um, hit your neighborhood, do you have things like medication that you might need um, or a change of clothes that maybe packing a little bag can give you some peace of mind that if a wildfire does occur, you're ready to go and, and you have a plan. 
These actions only take a few minutes, but they can save lives and protect our natural resources from wildfires. All right, we're going to switch gears now. Many of the actors and writers behind some of your favorite TV programs and movies are on strike right now. So that means some popular shows you and your families love to watch may not be back with new episodes this fall. Our friend Diego Ramos Pichera takes a look at what it means to go on strike. Lights, camera, action. A common phrase used on movie sets dating back many years. But there's no action taking place on movie sets these days. But why? Well, that's because both the writers behind those movies and TV shows, along with the actors who star in them, are on strike. So that means that some of your favorite shows and movies might not be returning to the big screen anytime soon. First things first, what exactly is a strike? Well, kids, we asked our friend Stephanie Rule to help explain. A strike is when a group of workers decide to stop going to work, usually to protest something about their jobs. They might be unhappy about how many hours they have to work, or maybe they want to get paid more, which is one of the reasons why actors and writers in Hollywood are going on strike right now. To make it just a little bit easier to understand, imagine your whole sports team at school deciding not to play until everyone gets a fair turn. That, in a way, is a strike. So we have two groups that are striking right now. One is the WGA, that's the Writers Guild of America, and they're the people who write and create the scripts for the stories that you love to watch. And then there's SAG-AFTRA, and they are the group of actors and performers who appear on those TV shows and movies. And together, they have refused to work until they get better pay for what they do. A lot of us think about actors in particular as making millions and millions of dollars. And yes, some of them do, but the truth is, Thousands and thousands and thousands of actors and performers actually don't make that much money. They're the people you see in the back of the scene, maybe walking down the street or in an office in the background. Back in the spring, the Writers Guild of America went on strike. Then last month, the organization that represents many actors and performers went on strike. Discussions are still ongoing with the studios for both groups, with no news yet on when these strikes might end. So that means that all of these shows that you're waiting to see are gonna take a while till you'll see them. In some cases, that could be several months, and in other cases, it could be a year. It will work out in the end in some way, but it's probably gonna take a little while for these two people who feel very differently to come together and work it out. Here's hoping your favorite TV shows and movie stars return to the big and small screens soon. Diego, thanks very much for that. And we should note the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, or AMPTP for short, represents Hollywood studios, including our parent company, NBC Universal. Negotiations between the Writers Guild of America and the AMPTP remain ongoing. All right, let's switch gears now and head to Texas, where students at one elementary school took some time out of their summer break to prepare for an important assignment the morning announcements. Let's get details now from our friend Wayne Carter with our NBC station KXAS. Mia, let's have you first. At Garden Ridge Elementary in Louisville, these soon-to-be fifth graders will tell you they're nervous to come back to school for their last year before middle school. The work is probably going to be pretty hard. Like, I've stepped from fourth grade, so it's probably going to be really way harder. One of the bright spots, though, brought them back to campus before summer was even over. Are you ready? Three, two, one. You're watching the Gator News. Meet the staff of Gator News. All kids who worked and auditioned to host the morning announcements broadcast in every classroom around campus. Maybe people are going to walk up to me and be like, you are on the Gator News. We do a third run through if necessary before we actually record. They okay. gave up their morning to come get used to the equipment, figure out how to make sense of their scripts. Are you ready? It's weird saying numbers, especially like I was like, do I say the change or do I not? I was thinking that the whole time I was saying that. It was really distracting. Sure, it's all good fun. What kid these days doesn't like the idea of being a star? But their kids know participating on the news team will give them so much more. I'm hoping to help them gain some confidence and some good leadership skills and good public speaking skills out of this. 
and I have seen some kids really come out of their shell during this time. They're excited to not just do something fun, but be role models to younger classmates, learn something new, and help keep the Garden Ridge Elementary Gators informed and inspired. Have a great day, Gators. Gators out. Wayne, thanks so much for that story. And joining us now from Garden Ridge Elementary School, our fifth graders, Sari Lozano and Jackson Schweigert. Great to have you here. I love your set, by the way. It looks very, very professional. Can't wait to hear all about this. Sari, I'll start with you. Tell me about how your first, the debut of Gator News went. Um, it was really fun. I... You didn't get nervous, did you? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, how about you? How did it go? Um, it went great. So is the idea for this to be like a like a television newscast? So, yeah. so basically it's just like on the news. So we explain how what the day is going to be like and the Pledges of Allegiance and Sex and City. Yeah. And then Jackson, do you guys have a cool sign out at the end? Uh, yeah, it's called, it's like, do I do it? Yeah. Yeah. Gators out. <laughs> I love that, Gators out. So how did you get selected for this? And, and is this something that, that the entire class gets to participate in? Um, so you have the, like, in the school year, like in fourth grade, we had the chance to, like, Miss Roundtree gave a QR code to all of the fourth grade teachers that we could sign and take an online quiz to see to answer questions to see if we got into broadcasting or not and like maybe like a few days later we got like a note back like a message back to us saying if we got in or not well only, you only got one if you got in uh, but, um, so Suri, tell me what's the best part of doing this um probably being on the camera and stuff it's fun are are your classmates recognizing you and say hey that's the girl on gator news Kind of. Okay, so you guys may not know this, but when I was in school, when I was in high school, I did the morning announcements. We didn't, we weren't using video, but we, I did it like a, a radio newscast every day. And my sign off was at 838, you're up to date. And, and did it like a, a regular newscast. So you guys have any questions of me? I do this for a living. Um, who's your favorite person you've ever interviewed? Favorite person, so there's favorite and then there's interesting, but the favorite interviews are always the ones where you're interviewing celebrities and, and famous people. Um, but sometimes the interesting ones can be people that you never heard of until now who just, um, you know, take the time to really tell us our stories. I can't give you a specific name, um, but interviewing people is certainly the best part of what we do. You guys have any other questions? Um, what is it like being on the news? It's, you know, it's like being the guy that knows everything first. You ever have a, something that you, you've learned and you want to share it with everybody? That's kind of what being a newscaster is like. You, you find out the information, you're the first to hear stuff, and you put it, in a, in a, put it together in, in a newscast, kind of like what you're doing there with Gator News, and you get to tell people exactly what's happening. It's a really, it's important responsibility, and it's a lot of fun. May I ask you a question? Well, this is their teacher. Oh, oh, yes. Hello. What do you recommend for them if they are interested in getting into broadcasting? What kind of things should they be trying to do and courses they should be looking into, like outside activities as well, just to help them better prepare themselves? Sure. That's a really good question. I always say writing. Uh, writing, believe it or not, is the most important thing that we do. Um, you know, obviously, it's a picture medium and, and the pictures are important, but the ability to, to concisely you know, tell a story and, and give it some balance and color in within a short amount of time is really important. So I don't know if you call that creative writing or whatever, but I think it's really important. And then, of course, staying on top of the news, um, you know, not only watching the news, but kind of studying the news and, and finding for yourself who and what you find really communicates the story well and, and then try to put that to use. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of how I formed who I am, was watching other newscasters, deciding why I liked them, why they were, you know, effective communicators, um, and then kind of taking those notes to heart and incorporate, incorporating them into what I do. Thank you. Sari and Jackson, it's been great having you on our program. Keep doing what you're doing, and uh, you never know where it's going to take you, but congratulations. Thank you. Of course. 
Um, can I just this say this? Thank you. Nightly News Kids Edition out. Boom. Eaters out. Eaters out. Whoa. <laughs> All right, let's turn now to our Around the Globe series. We're headed to the Galapagos Islands. It's a group of islands in South America located off the coast of Ecuador, and it's home to some pretty amazing creatures, including some not found any place else on Earth. Ava Maldonado has the story. Where in the world can you find penguins, sea lions, and birds of every color? all living together in harmony? The Galapagos Islands are an archipelago, or a group of islands, located in South America, off the coast of Ecuador. There are 13 major islands, six minor islands, and a lot of smaller islands, which are called islets. The islands were formed by underwater volcanoes, which erupted millions of years ago, creating a one-of-a-kind environment along the equator, or the middle of the world. Because of their isolated location and diverse climate, the Galapagos Islands are home to an incredible array of animal life, like the Galapagos tortoise, one of the oldest living animals on Earth. Did you know the Galapagos giant tortoise is also the world's largest tortoise? Some have grown more than five feet wide and weigh in at over 500 pounds. And because these islands have both warm and cold water sources, they're home to a special species of penguins, Galapagos penguins. Unlike Arctic penguins, these birds have shorter feathers to account for the warmer climate. They do this really fun behavior called porpoising. So they will swim and kind of jump out of the water mid-swim. So they can't fly in the air like other birds, but they can fly underwater. And it's pretty amazing how they use their wings and they've adapted or changed to live specifically in the water. Many of the animals in the Galapagos had to figure out how to survive in an unfamiliar place when they first arrived millions of years ago. Over time, these changes became part of the species' normal behavior and are called adaptations. When land iguanas arrived to the newly formed Galapagos Islands, they had trouble finding food, so they started eating seaweed and algae from the shore to survive. Eventually, they even learned to swim and are now called marine iguanas. They climb on the rocks and they like to bask in the sun, but they're really adept swimmers and they have great adaptations to help them expel salt from their system. Their feet and their tail are specially adapted to swim uh, in the rough coastline of the Galapagos. Because of the adaptations some animals have developed to live in this one-of-a-kind environment, the Galapagos is the only place in the world you can find certain creatures, like marine iguanas, Galapagos penguins, and flightless cormorants. It's important to protect these unique creatures in their homes, which are struggling to keep up with tourism and environmental changes. The Houston Zoo recently opened an exhibit showcasing the biodiversity of the Galapagos Islands, helping educate people about this very special place and what you can do to help preserve its beauty for years to come. It was really important for us to bring the Galapagos Islands to Texas, specifically to the Houston Zoo. We've eliminated single-use plastics and straws and bags here at the Houston Zoo because we know the impact that that has on animals that live in islands like the Galapagos. So we know that things that we can do every day just to help very simple things that, that will have a dramatic impact on animals that live in the Galapagos because of that shared ocean that we have. Small steps with a big impact for the future of the breathtaking Galapagos Islands. Ava, thanks very much. Now to our picture of the week. Check this out. Forget water slides and popsicles. This black bear decided to cool off by taking a bubble bath. That's right, the 10-year-old bear named Finn beat the heat on a recent hot day with bubbles at the Knoxville Zoo in Tennessee. Who knew that bears like bubble baths? Now to our Inspiring Kids series. We have two stories to share with you this week. The first one is about a team from Long Island, New York, who just made history by winning the Little League Softball World Series. Our friend Jessica Cunnington was with the Massapequa International team for their homecoming. Massapequa has been waiting. And the moment has come. The world champs are back home. And 
back on their field. One, two, three, people! The Massapequa International 12 and under softball team met by their families, friends, and fans who watched every step of their undefeated run to Little League World Series winners. It starts to feel real a little bit because now everybody's supporting us, so it starts to feel like like it's not just a dream, like it's coming true. The first softball team from New York to ever win a World Series title, and these girls just started playing together three months ago. Like we all just kind of like clicked after a couple practices, and we've been like close ever since. All the hard work has paid off. Like all of the time that we put in, and all the effort that we all put in, and it's and it's all paid off, and it was so worth it. We come here and we pull up, and we see all these people here. It's just. Wow, you know. Champion treatment began when they landed at LaGuardia with a water salute. Hey, World Series champions! Before even the last out even came, I had tears in my eyes and I mean, I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of all of them. I started playing uh, baseball because of my sister and her success, so I'm glad she won. The whole town inspired and energized by the 12 girls who worked hard and just kept going together. Even if something gets tough, even if you make a mistake, just know that your team's there behind you. The Mets and the Yankees couldn't do it, but we brought the World Series home. We did it. <laughs> we said we would do it, and we did it. Jessica, thanks so much, and congratulations to the team. Let's turn to another story we're highlighting this week in our Inspiring Kids series. One boy from Rhode Island with a lot of ambition and a love for lemonade has put his sales talents to the test, all to help others. We get details now from our friend Sam Reed. On a hot summer day, there's nothing better than sipping ice cold Last month, while others were at the beach or partying in the pool, nine-year-old Theo Durson and his cousin Abby set up shop along Jerry Brown Farm Road in Wakefield, Rhode Island. This is the third annual one. How many cups? They weren't raising money for themselves, but for kids who most likely wouldn't be able to do something like this. I'm doing a lemonade today for Hasbro Children's Hospital. Not lemonade! In the beginning of the pandemic, the then six-year-old had an idea. He was what? People would think about the people with COVID, but not the people with cancer. But Theo was. His first year, he brought in about $100. He's like, I've got to do it again because I want to raise more money than I did last year. Then the second year came around. The second year, we raised $1,000. And here we are in the third. And my goal is to raise 2000 this year. And Theo is exhausting all angles. Pink lemonade! Not taking no for an answer. You don't know what you're missing out on! Because every dollar donation Here you go. and every cup counts. I thought the last time Chris and Matt say more. Theo says he knows what it's like not to be like everyone else. I have special needs. Having been diagnosed with ADHD and Tourette's, his mom says recently he became a rehabilitation patient at the hospital he's been helping. It's really been a good experience for us. And then I think that makes it even more special that he knows that the money is going towards, you know, a hospital that he's been a patient at. Theo says throughout everything, he's learned to make lemonade out of lemons. It felt happy and it felt good. And thanks to his ongoing efforts this year, he's reached his goal. More than $2,000 will go to Hasbro, making his efforts a little extra sweet. It just makes me super proud. He's a great kid and, you know, want to encourage him to give to others. So it's, it's a great thing. Showing you something good. Thank you so much. Sam, thanks so much. And Theo, great job. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, Email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. And you can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching and remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long. <laughs> Nightly News Kids Edition out. Boom. Eaters out. Eaters out. Whoa. <laughs>